for coming by once again uh, to the IXDA Meetup. My name is Ket, and I'm the organizer for uh, this series of Meetup. Um, how many of you are actually first time here? Oh. <laughs> There are, there are some that are like been here for quite a few times, right? I suppose. So just to re, uh, give you an introduction, what ISDA is all about. So uh, ISDA stands for Inter uh, Interaction Design Association. It's actually a global non-profit uh, where we have chapters all around the world, uh, volunteers organizing meetups, conferences, events, etc. So we are just a Singapore chapter here, and together with uh, I guess you all know UXSG. So we're just one of the other community here, uh, supporting UX designers, practitioners, you know, fostering design, collaboration, and learning. So today, um, thanks for Singapore, thanks thanks to Singapore Power, um, Priscilla for, you know, uh, sponsoring the the venue. And I guess you want to share something. Hi everybody! Thanks for coming. So I've been in a hot seat once, and I was in property guru at the time, so um, this is a new challenge. We want to bring design thinking into the energy industry, which is yet to be disrupted. That's why we are hiring a lot of awesome developers and, and designers. And I am hiring a researcher. So if you are interested, then let me and Yao Long know. And that's Yao Long. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, the pizzas that you enjoyed is also from Singapore Power, so I think let's give a round of applause for them. <laughs> okay, so today we are going to have uh, Shah, right? And Shah is the head of what? strategy, design? Design and strategy. Design and strategy uh, in Palo IT. Yes. Is it pronounced Palo IT or Palo IT? Uh, I like to say Palo. Palo. Yes. Okay, so let's give Shah a round of applause and let's get into the conversation. Okay, so just before we start, uh, in case you saw a screen here, but there's nothing on, it's totally okay because there is no presentation uh, meant to be, right? Because it's a conversation, right? So the idea really came about as a talk show, lah, right? Where there's a host and there's a guest. Yeah, so you're <laughs> on the hot seat today. Thank you for having me. Uh, okay, so maybe for a start, would you share with us uh, your background and how do you end up where you are today? Okay, um, I ended up where I am today through many rounds of kind of like iterations, I guess. But I've I've kind of like knew from at pretty early age that I wanted to do something that involves um, computer. Uh, I didn't know what 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 it was, um, and and. Something that is cool, something that is uh, uh, that has creative aspect of it, All right? So um, I've been following along this path, luckily, uh, till today, um, and yeah, that's how I ended up. You know, started off like just like that. Okay, and how ma how many years was that? In so in terms of working experience, um, I have almost twenty years of experience. Um, so I guess in today's age could be considered as dinosaurs, right? But that said, um, I still think that I have a lot to learn, right? Um, and and there's just too many things that are happening, right? Um, not only from our kind of like you know core practice, but also in terms of like you know um, understanding better in terms of like you know how technology may impact what we do and how we can actually still continually bridge the gap between the businesses as well as you know what we do and the customers right, right. so uh i when i know you it was a couple of years back and you were doing your own consulting yes practice, right? so um just to give you a bit background i guess i, I before I, I i go into some of like you know the nitty-gritty details um i should give some context in terms of what kind of company am I working for, right? Uh, am I working at? So Palo is a French um, company who was established in Singapore in 2009. So it's it has a very strong kind of like, you know, roots and culture around um, agile development, right? That has been like, you know, since day one. Um, about 
18 months ago. Um, you know, Paolo and I, we've gone back almost like, you know, three years ago. Uh, we were doing quite a number of like projects uh, as partners, right? Uh, where they needed some kind of like you know design help, and and I needed some kind of like you know development help, right? And the journey has been relatively interesting uh, because uh, I came um, so before I set up my own company, uh, I came from a very traditional kind of like you know digital agency background, right? There was a there was there was a number of reasons which I will kind of revisit um, as to why I, I decided to venture out. But anyway, we've been dating for almost like you know three four years. Okay. So uh, I, at one point we decided like let's 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 kind of like you know drop this kind of like facade and see how we can actually move together, right? And that's where I've been doing for the last. Um, I guess 14 months now, right? 14, eight, yeah, around there. Okay. And from this 14 months, uh, you know, what are some of the exciting stuff that you've been working <coughs> on? I know there's one that you've been you presented during oh, the CEO yeah. design week. Um, so one of the most exciting ones is seeing how the team has evolved. Um, when Paolo began, there was just basically me, right? And to date, oh, there are 16 of us. So that's over, just slightly over a year. So in terms of like, you know, the kind of um, hardship that we have to go through, it's, it's, it's relatively kind of like, you know, amazing. I mean, I, I, would, I, I would, it would be a lie if I said that, you know, it's just my effort, right? But in fact, one thing that I really, really appreciate about Palo as, as a company, um, it has a very, very kind of like l strong servant leadership culture. Um, so just to give me to give you guys some context, what I mean by this. So typically in a traditional company, um, when you involve like you know when you see the big boss, the MDs, the VPs, or whatever, right? So. <coughs> More not than often, um, they're the kind of guys like, you know, you want to meet with them, you need to kind of like, oh, I need look at my calendar, um, you know, let's let's find if I, I, I can spare you an empty slot, right? Just a very basic one, right? Whereas in pilot context, um, I'm talking about here is the big boss who, who runs the company, right? But mind you, he's a really young chap. He's only, when he started the Palo Singapore operation, uh, he was 30 years old and he's 35 now, mm. right? So we were involved in um, one of the client um, uh, uh, on, on site at a client. So we, we, we know that, you know, to, to make sure that we can execute the job, we require some equipment, right? Not just any equipment, it's a, pr it's a printer, right? He took it upon himself to actually bring the printer, walk, all the way from our office to the client's office in a swel sweltering heat. When he reached there, he didn't even complain, right? And that basically says something, right? right. Yeah. So in, in that one year, your team of designers grew from you to... Um, in terms of like the kind of skill sets that we have within our team, so we have people who specializes or who has PhD in behavior psychology, right? Um, and we have people who work in game design. Um, we have people who work in um, the standard kind of like, you know, digital agency. And we have people who fresh graduate, who, uh, you know, uh, uh, graduate from like, you know, short courses like, you know, the GA, uh, General Assembly um, UX Intensive. Mm. And we also have people who have military experience right. right so in terms of our team makeup it's it's very very diverse okay and um yeah so so far um i would assume that everyone is kind of like having a ball right um and we'll see how far we can actually push it right so just to give uh the audience you know i know we are uh, at least 20 steps away, <laughs> which I hope not to. 
um, the initial part of the conversation is always context driven, right? Mm. So it gives you an idea on well, who is this person, his background, his journey. But really, the the meat of it is when it comes to the questions that you want to ask. Right? So you can ask basically anything that you all want to find out from this uh, nice. design leader. Uh, and I, I realized I didn't really kind of like specifically mention what kind of like, you know, clients that we have, Palo. Is it confidential? It, I, I, I can tell you the industry, uh -huh. right? Uh, uh, but I wouldn't be able to tell you the names, I guess. But the, the kind of work? Oh, uh, the, the, the kind of work. Um, so uh, a lot of the work that we do is actually it's, it's confidential work. Um, we do, um, in fact, if you look at um, down the street, right, all the different kind of like ATMs and, you know, that's a big kind, right? Um, so those financial institutions are our clients, right? Um, we also recently been engaged by um, one of the gov government agency to actually help them to craft out like, you know, um, an input to their innovation challenge. Okay, um, I can tell you who it is, like in terms of the government agency, because it's it's actually STB. Mm. Okay, and um, in terms of the kind of work that we do, predominantly it's application built, right? Uh, so software. Uh, software, but we are not limiting ourselves in terms of like you know pure web built, but we also venture out to uh, like tablet. Uh, mobile phones, pretty much, you know, cross devices. Okay. So is is Palo more of a software development firm? We would like to position ourselves as a problem solver, of which we use typically digital as a mean to to solve this problem, right? Um, as part of like you know uh, the the vision that I have specifically for the design and strategy team. It's how might we actually, you know, create more values not just on the digital space but also like you know in, in a physical world, right? And I think a, a, a good example of that would be you know the the our internal pet project, which is um, you know to create you know a healthcare for the the cancer, which we are still um, in the progress of creating our um, MVP. So from zero to fifteen today, you know, what do you do in terms of hiring? Uh, how how is it being done? Was hiring difficult? Definitely, in terms of hiring, has never been an easy one, right? Um, I think it's really really important for us uh, not only to hire the people with the right skill set. But there is some form of like a cultural fit. Mm -hmm. So I think the first few hires, um, I, th I think the first hire that we did was more of like, you know, um, it was just because we had to do it, right? And, and because of this, we've kind of like learned that you do need to take your time to actually make sure that these people will fit into um, our culture. Okay. And what are some of the things that you, you look out for you know, when it comes to hiring designers? <coughs> so uh, apart from the kind of like, you know, the basic, which is like, you know, overall, uh, you need to have a decent portfolio with a good kind of like, um, opportunities to be further developed, right? Um, we also ensure that they they are what they say they are. So um, our hiring process involves um, having the candidates uh, to actually go through a specific test, right? Um, where the test basically, you know, will require the candidate to work on a specific problem for about six hours. Obviously, we want to make ensure that, like you know, why six hours? Um, number one, we want to ensure that, like you know, the candidate doesn't feel that we are taking them for a ride, right? And number two, uh, we also want to see how does the candidate uh, work under pressure, right? And and number f uh, number three, it's it's 
to see you know how clear in terms of their their thinking because a lot of this you know in, in terms of the final presentation uh, we expect you know to see the design artifact how you arrive at the specific solution that you you presented so anything from the ground from the audience yet wow Chris has something already <laughs> Painful. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope there is no fintech client. Um, all right. Anyway, first thing first. Uh, in a kind of like heavily regulated kind of industry, um, there's a lot of emphasis on compliance, right? So, just to give you an example, um, recently, not recent, about. Yeah, about six months ago, so I guess I guess that's pretty recent. So, let's say I I want to sell you uh, an investment product, right? So, from a user experience standpoint, we need to make sure that any form of terminologies that we use is actually as clear and as simple as possible without any form of jargon, right? So, for us to actually make a simple recommendation you know to make sure like you know oh um, let's say you want to um, um, in invest in a, a unit trust that has like a, a, a what do you call it a high a high risk right certain lingo must be retained and this needs to be validated by the legal and compliance so because you know, we, we can't make mistake when we were when we're selling kind of like you know investment products. Okay. Does that answer your question? Partly. Yeah, in some sense, yeah. So uh, and another thing, I guess, in large corporation, right? Um, the the immediate client that you see may not be like you know the the full full breadth of like you know the full stakeholder engagement so it is very very important on the very onset when the project begins we need to define um, who are the relevant key stakeholders um, so by doing this at the very least when we embark on a discovery phase right we can immediately start engaging these people even though they didn't know that th there is such um, initiative exists and the reason being um, it's it, you don't want to you trap in a, in a position where you know you've gone through enough round of iteration and then suddenly you realize that you need to engage stakeholder X it has happened before and and and, and it's definitely is not um, a, a, a nice thing to have when you need to change like what you've done 180 degrees right because simply the communication is lacking or the expectation were not set correctly right. yeah wow today is very quiet <laughs> <laughs> the lady in front she she looks like she has questions no yeah Mm. Um, it's a technical constraint, so I need to do. I need to ask the programmer to do a multiple drop down selection. So he he told me that he need to spend four man days. I asked another programmer, which is another team. He told me that he need to spend one man day. How do you handle this situation? <coughs> Yeah, you guys are agile, right? So you have to work with developers. Your uh, own team. I'm not gonna answer that question immediately, <laughs> but uh, let me take you through some of the pain points or the growing pains that we're facing. Um, our business model is a little bit different, right? Um, from what a typical agency uh, set up. So typically, when a client engage us um, to work on a specific project we will assemble a specific team. Um, in, total, in totality, in terms of like the number of um, people in Singapore, we have 
115 people, right? So, there, in the, there, there lie in the challenge. From a design standpoint, it is very, very hard to always get the same kind of like um, uh, uh, developers, scrum masters, whatever, right? And and that is definitely one of like you know the many experiences that we have faced because developer comes with varying level of skill sets and experience. So my advice is, it depends on how your project is set up. It's is to be a little bit more patient, I guess, right? Because things that I didn't realize until much later, maybe about ten years ago. I always think that design was a solo kind of like um, uh, endeavor where you, you yourself alone are the one who make the project success or break. But the truth be told is actually it's always about teamwork, right? So with any kind of like team formulation, there's always going to be a teething problem. So go bear with it and 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 see how you can actually assist the developer by maybe helping them to find like you know some code snippet uh, code snippet samples be useful to developers right don't kind of like enforce your view like the other developer said like you know one day you you said four days indirectly what you're saying is you're lousier than him but maybe it's it's he he hasn't reached the same level of maturity or the same level of experience, right? Does that answer? Yeah. So so you you guys really always face this kind of challenges. <coughs> um, yes, and 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 obviously this is as one of like um, the the challenges that I'm trying to solve, right? So could we, Paulo, uh, have like a, a a system, a process whereby, you know, we set like a team, the same team setup for an X number of period of like months or, or you know, before they actually get rotated. Right. So um you mentioned that there is what hundred and thirty a hundred and fifteen a hundred and twenty people okay. of which I have not met all of them. Okay. And there is 15 designers or in the uh, design so team. the design team in terms of the f the full design kind of like uh, uh, designer how many it's a growing number uh, <laughs> the the four 13 14 around there so and we also have recently um because the the design team actually changes a little bit in terms of like you know the scope, right? Um, not only just pure design execution from like you know research or whatever, right? But now we're adding a new portfolio which is the strategy piece. Mm. Okay, so as part of um, our uh, uh, care is actually business analysts. Right. So how 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 does it work? Like designers or we have uh, designers attaching to the team on the full length of the project. Or is it like S and when is needed? Uh. Um, really depends on the project context, I guess. Right? Um, some some projects simply do not require designer. Some do, right? But we are trying to uh, create a model where we know that the designer's role is more than just simply tactical execution of what you see on the screen. So to give you an example. Um, I think more, uh, more most project could benefit um, having a designer as part of your inception process. So in a way, you know, to run like you know design thinking kind of like you know activities, right? At the very least, y you know, uh, the design uh, the designer who's 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 part of that project will be able to actually set the project context or frame the pro uh, the the the, uh, the 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 project scope, right? Okay, and 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 from that it depends. Like you know, if there are specific kind of like um, uh, uh, the standard UX design type of work that needs to be done, then yes, the designer can stay on. Otherwise, like you know, it's just purely more from a project scoping standpoint. 
I see. Okay. So, is it the same? How how do you guys work at Singapore Power? Let's <laughs> um, just compare, right? No, one is a in-house product team. I see similarities um, because a lot of the FI um, innovation studios actually are our client. Mm. So we are treated as part of the team. Okay, so we've been involved in terms of like um, uh, uh, helping them again to run like many design thinking led kind of like initiative just to try to figure out what is it exactly that we need to do, right? Mm. Um, and uh, the just, just out of curiosity here, I, I, I want to understand. I, I just want to understand. Do people here know what does design thinking is? It's you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you. No. no. You don't know what design thinking is. Okay. Anyone? Huh? Like yes, you do. <laughs> you look like as if someone who knows. <laughs> Okay, you want to have a go at it? What What is design thinking? No, no, I don't have a definition. So some people who might have a definition? Not you guys. I can try. Yes. Uh, design thinking is uh, basically whatever solution you're coming up with starts from a problem or a question that you're trying to solve, but you're working it from a design standpoint and a process where you are working towards a solution from a design standpoint of view. That means when you are, when you are coming up with a solution, you are designing how, step by step, how this process is going to be solved by itself. Okay. Does every anybody agree with that? Or I have a different definition? What about you, sir? Uh, Lin, yes. Okay, so ask, yes. Uh, my point is that it's got human-centered design approach. Right? That means we approach the problem, frame it from the user perspective, right? and have all the stakeholders. And uh, ultimately, it's a form of uh, system analysis to see the video scope. Then from there, we zoom in. Uh, or another way to put it in a applied way is that you just need to uncover the unmet needs. Okay. Or maybe customer that you underserve. Okay. So DT might help us to uh, sneak that out. That's one of the ways to see it. Then. Okay. Cool. All right. And what kind of activities would that be? That you would do, yeah. For me? Yes. The classic research methods, talk to people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Cool. All right. Anyone else? No. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm just curious, it, right? It has a lot of me different. There, there's, there's a lot of different right? definition. There's a lot of different ways of practicing design thinking. So. <laughs> Um, I guess I guess to me it's about a technique that f helps people realize and come to uh, 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 almost like a, a consensus in terms of what is it that we we are solving, whether it involves user or not, uh, in terms of like the end customer. That's a different story. So it's like a tool for aligning stakeholders in terms of the direction we're gonna take. Yes. Right. And 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 that's something that we we do a lot, right? And um 
we we are one of those kind of like you know folks who feel you can talk till the cow come home mm. and if you can't put it on a piece of board or a piece of paper and everybody understand yes that's what we are doing then there's no point right it's about tool to kind of like you know li literally to get consensus okay any questions from the ground no <laughs> okay <laughs> so I, I i'm gonna go in, instead of like you know talking about like you know some of like uh the, the cool stuff um i think i would like to take this opportunity specifically to really share some of my failures right um so if i were to do a time machine right let, let's say things that takes me back to uh maybe when i was 10 years old mm. okay the first mistake wait, wait, wait. How, how are you i'm not gonna tell <laughs> you i'm not gonna freaking tell you man <laughs> all right um uh, uh how do you all think he is old enough <laughs> You just need to look at the this one, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, okay, when I was ten years old, I was really awestruck by my parents, right? Um, I I could be considered as very very lucky to have two parents who have experience. Was it like to study abroad and to be able to speak multiple languages, right? And at one point of time, I I thought then my parents were the smartest okay that was the uh, and little that i realize our parents no matter how smart they are there is a limit right and 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 by putting them on a pedestal it 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 made me feel like you know uh, you know it's it's that that specific goal is unreachable okay so what I would tell my 10 year old then, it's don't worry whether you can actually reach that level or not, right? And, and just keep on enjoying what you do. And during that time specifically, I really enjoyed like, you know, drawing, which I think there was a lot of times where I just find myself like asking for that a little bit of acknowledgement from, from them. But being in, in an Asian family, getting a, that simple pat on the back is really, really difficult. So don't worry about getting acknowledgement. Just keep soldiering on and keep on, you know, practicing. Okay? And in my teens, um, I think the biggest mistake that I, 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 I did was... The current team. Teens. Oh, teens. teens. Okay, okay. Um, I think I, I put a lot of, uh, back then I put a lot of um, emphasis on just being physically strong. There was less emphasis on, you know, striking a balance between, you know, uh, physical, uh, uh, being healthy as well as mentally, like, you know, um, stimulated, right? Um, I would encourage my, you know, teen self to actually do a little bit more positive experimentation, right? Be it like uh, uh, joining a drama club, joining a, a debate club, because all these small, small kind of like, you know, activities actually will have an impact in terms of how we co influence and communicate. Communication, I thought it was just like, you can just bluff your way through, but it isn't. Right? It's something that needs to be cult cultivated. And this happens through doing things, activities that are related to that. Okay? So, in my 20s, um, probably I would consider, uh, what I would say to myself, it's, if, if any point of time, if you find, like, you know, if you have a specific question, by all means, you know, let, let me know. Right. In my twenties, I, I think the the thing that I would tell my uni studying days is stop falling asleep during um, history lessons. History, as much as dry or as boring as is, 
is actually helpful to in terms of providing context, right? Um, and pay less less attention in terms of like creating things that are blinky, creating things that are visually attractive. If you aren't able to kind of like articulate as to why certain things exist, why they should be that color, you're pretty much just like a fake. And history will help you, or specific cl classical theory will help you to um, uh, uh, do this better. Mm. Right. And during my work years, um, start start of the career, I think one of the biggest learning point is staying hungry is good, but you know. And and staying hungry in a sense like what is it? My working years don't be a douche. I in many respect I think I was I I treat many people pretty badly. No, I, it's, it's it's not a joke, right? Uh, I I I need to own up to like you know in terms of how 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 I treat people badly, right? So I was I was thinking like, you know, again going back to my earlier point, design I thought it was a uh, a single kind of like a uh, sportsman kind of like, you know, event, but it is not. To really deliver a cool kind of like, you know, well thought out solution, you need to always be working with the team, rallying your team to do better and better and better. Okay? And this, this also means that, like you know, instead of like you know calling them names, try to always put yourself in their shoes, which is what uh, any UX designer should be, right? Think from the point of view of like you know your user, uh, your client, your business, yada yada yada. But this lesson came too late, I think, for me, right? I think one of one of one of the turning point for me was like. Um, when I was, uh, I was always constantly making demands, 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 to the point where I think at one point I was, yeah, I was fired, right? I was fired because my demand was unrealistic, and I was fired because I wasn't able to articulate why I demanded what I want demanded. I was just pretty much acting like a little boy, like a little kid who just wants, you know, what he wants. Okay. And and another thing that I I also learned it, this is going back to you know how I I like to put my parents as someone who is really really um, uh, uh, people who are really really smart whatever but there is a ceiling in terms of like their knowledge right the same goes with myself the same goes with the bosses that I have right. I never knew that no matter how smart your boss is, sometimes, you know, I, I guess I guess uh, they don't feel comfortable uh, saying, you know, I don't know, right? And <coughs> and because of all these things, you know, uh, not not by not not able to uh, uh, say what 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 they feel or what they don't know. We 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 reached to a point where there are there were some conflicts, right? So from all these kind of like different different learnings, I I I try to rectify it in in where I am today. So essentially, you know, in in case you are trying to catch, uh, I think what I'm getting it is really the advices that you will be giving to someone who is entering the industry. Entering the industry as well as people who are practicing, right. right? Because for those who are entering the industry, it's 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 it's, it's easier, it's clean canvas. But for those who are currently practicing, if they are, uh, if they are not, uh, if they're not, if they are not doing what I I I I kind of shared, they may run into the same problem that I face, right? So yeah. So on the audience here, um, how 
I guess there is a group that is just entering the industry, right? Mm. Or d- making a career switch. Um, is that quite, quite a bunch? Yeah. <laughs> uh, who who is kind of like making a career switch right now into UX? Okay. <coughs> and. UX is headed uh, with the use of new technologies nowadays. It's very interesting. I want to see his insights on that. Okay. <coughs> um, very very interesting question. Um, and 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 this is why uh, I think we are no longer able to stay put and doing our standard repertoire, right? Repertoire in a sense of. Uh, research, um, synthesis, um, um, and then you know you ideate, and then you know prototype, yada yada yada, right? So, how do we make ourselves remain relevant in the next five years or ten years? The answer most probably people won't like, mm. but we need to start learning on how to communicate with machines. So what does that mean? It means one thing: the designer or wh- whoever needs to who are who are who loves working in the digital space, they need to learn how to code. That's one of the prerequisites. Who who agrees or disagrees on that? I actually have a question regarding that because um, I actually I interacted with some developers and discovered the way they function and approach a problem is very different from how I approach a problem and how they solve it. And so I was thinking, will it be counterproductive if I were to know some knowledge about coding so that when I work with them, I'm able to like sort of help them think out of various ways to speed up the process or will it be counterintuitive when I propose stuff based on the limited knowledge that I have about coding? Le- coding is actually learning a new language. Uh, and learning a new language is always a good practice, right? Because it actually ex- it, it, it expanded your brain. It's like you know picking up your second language. So to, to your point, whether it will hinder or actually enhance, to me it actually will enhance, right? Because um, you, you will begin to um, appreciate of how certain things are done and that may in turn provide a good constraint in terms of creating a better design solution. That's my take. Yeah. I got a similar question in fact. How would you make sure that a design is uh, implementable in terms of guidelines, process, and tools you may be using on the projects? Can you give more context to that? Yeah, for, for example, you have this project where you need to design your user experience also encompass the UI. Eventually, you need to hand over this design to some developer to implement that in a mobile app or on the website. So you're trying to bridge actually two words. As a gentleman said, you don't have always the same kind of uh, jargon or lingo. So you need some kind of guidelines where the designer might be slightly restricted, but whatever you will produce as an artifact will be implementable by the developer, being able to use as a block, as a building block for the next job. So I've been in this situation where we had a decision maker saying, oh, design goes to this agency, implementation goes to this uh, uh, integration partner. And I thought it was a big mistake to not build both together to really think of and hey, make sure what you produce can be incorporated in the next uh, in, in the next phase. And we had a lot of issue, not with the UI because it, it was like a static feature, right? But the UX was impacted, and the UX rarely uh, take in consideration how how things load faster. What is the experience? Why? Because we are concepts like caching or freshness of data that are never discussed. 
because it's technical, because maybe it's boring, mm. but it's so important. When yep. something loads fast, it's not, it might not be fresh data, you know, or this kind of consideration is part of the design, but it's not only UI. It's not only, it's not only a static PSD. So another question would be, how do you educate the stakeholder and decision maker to understand actually that UX is not only the UI. PSD? Yes. Do you run testing? Sorry? Do you run user testing? Do I run user testing? Run user testing. Um, not right now. <laughs> that would be your first step, right? So whatever your flat mockups, even before it gets shipped over to your integration partner, you might you might want to run it as a, a as a user test. That's number one. Because you, you you said like you know how can we show to our stakeholders UX is more than just UI. What what would be a better way to kind of like um, prove that than user tests? Okay, that's that's the first qu uh, that was the last question. The, the the first question that you have was how do we bridge the communication gap? There are quite a number of different tools that you can actually utilize. Right. So, for an example, the way we communicate with our developers, um, if we need to show certain interaction design, we use things like all the way uh, things like you know Envision, Balsamic, um, um, Axure, Principle, right? But if they need to know the specific specifications of like what is the button colors, what is the dimension, what is the font size, then we will use a different sets of tools. So in this case, would be using tools like Zeppelin. We'll be using tools like Envision, and even we'll be using tools like Sketch. So, by having these tools, hopefully, we'll address some of your 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 questions. Have you used this tool? Yeah. yeah. The how the how did it work? But the thing is, I I faced this problem before these tools existed. Mm. Yep. And it was not my um, my call to, to tell um, the digital agency to to make this kind of format for my team to implement, for example. Yeah. So, oh, so, so you're on the implementation side? As in, are you on the implementation side or you're on the. Uh, I've been on both. Uh -huh. And in some kind of project, the, the customer will segregate both. Hmm. Because it's his decision. Even though it's arguable. Um, the, the, my initial question was how do you let the, the stakeholder know that actually it's, it's very important to have both in the same room uh, when you, you do this design thinking or you share your specification. It's very important that both think at the same time about what is, what is the requirement and where the customer wants to go. Else, you may, the, the parts may, may not add into an, an app. Yeah. Unless they are actually a, a, a study design and it might never make it to an app. Just, uh, I think it was a common problem I faced a few times. Are, are you part of like a, a company or are you? do you work as a freelancer? I've done both. But your current scenario that you're p portraying, is it? Oh, it was uh, two years ago for, um, for a big uh, MNC company. So we were an integrator and we were working with a digital agency to bring the, pro the project together. Mm. But in the end, we were the one responsible for uh, delivering. Delivery. Yeah. So we, we had to cope with uh, with the design and adjust it to, to deliver the right experience. I think I have an answer. So uh, we were as part of the integration partner, and we were working with another external agency doing the uh, design work. Right? Yeah. So what seemed more like a waterfall type of format, where all the design happened up front. And then social design got pushed over to the integration partner, which was you. Is that correct? Okay, very interesting remark. Let me comment on that. Mm -hmm. My customer it was the time where everybody wanted to do agile, because agile is what you want to do, right? Sure. But the scope was fixed. Not the scope, sorry. The timeline was fixed. Mm -hmm. The cost was fixed. Only two things could change. The scope, yeah, we were in a situation where there was a scope creep because Agile was a project boss to bring your requirement. Hey, you can always iterate. 
Yeah, but we have a limited set of resources and time. True. So I said the only thing I can change for you guys is the quality. Say, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't touch the quality. But uh, when you're in this situation, it's very difficult because in MNC budgets are voted. You have that much money, that much runtime. But the headquarters says, please be cool, do scrum, and tell us how you did it. So, so uh, what I divided is the time. I divided the time in a number of sprint iterations, sure. which was retarded. But I had to do this. I had to do a hybrid. <laughs> so, uh, which doesn't exist, by the way. One way that we usually do stuff at, at, uh, at Apollo is we obviously do everything in agile format. So to answer your question in regards to, yes, when you, when you approach a project, it always has a fixed scope, fixed price. So what we do is, in the beginning, um, we have everybody on the table, our developers, designers, product owners, every other stakeholder that's involved. And we start weighing the story points, saying, okay, based off of this nine week sprint, or say, this three month cycle, this, these are all the story points that we can fit into this, uh, into this, the schedule of so two months, right? So we have a list of the most important things that need to, that need to be implemented, and then there we can actually see, okay, this is the resources we need. We need 10 devs, we need five designers. Um, so in regards to going to your earlier question, in regards to how do you, how do you manage the implementation piece of, of designer UX work that, that's been implemented? So we work in agile, so usually design always happens a, a sprint before, uh, before it gets to, to the dev sprints. So usually um, devs will essentially do an investigation task on that design work. Uh, and if it if it's, takes too much time to essentially to implement it, then either they, they push back in design or they get with the product owner. You know, essentially there's that conversation that happens between all the stakeholders and we really like this design solve. It's, it's going to take this m amount of effort to do it. Um, is this something that we want to do? Right. You, you know, this may eat up more of our sprints to implement it. So it's, it's one of those things where it's a constant communication, which can only happen in Agile. So we can still kind of work in that. Just because we're in Agile doesn't mean it's like a never ending um, cycle. You know, we can work within Agile uh, in a two month sprint. But we we know how we, we know there's 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 kind of risks where there's certain user stories that may fall out of of that two minute cycle if other things pop up like in implementation or you know other QA issues that may pop up. Okay, so I guess we can take this offline and discuss in detail. Um, but it's a very common problem, right? Designers and developers and engineers always in a constant struggle to. Either in a development house where you're trying to balance between budget and timeline, or even in house, right? You know, it, why is this taking too long, and why we can't ship our product, and so on? This is a very common issue. Um, yeah, I just want to to ask if there are any any other things you would like to ask, uh, so we can get the most out. <laughs> yes, Victor. I have a question. Yeah. So, so you've been in this business for twenty years. You see. Um, Did I say 20? 20 years. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you've seen essentially the evolution of the UX practice from information architecture, graphic designers, every single job description out there. Um, so given the current skill set of, of today's UX designer, what would you say would be uh, the most uh, a non-traditional UX trait that you feel is needed in today's uh, world? A non-traditional UX Non-traditional. Non-traditional. Very interesting question. Art history. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Non-traditional. Um, I guess it would be psychology. No. Psychology is not traditionally been associated with, you know, user experience. Another thing that has never been associated with user experience, it's um, data analytics being one of them, right? Um, yeah, it's the ability to actually quantify your design effort that would be really, really beneficial. And I guess I know why you mentioned psychology, because you have a, in your team, a PhD in psychology, right? Um, no. <laughs> no? No, but it's really about understanding human behavior. Right. You think by 
doing a bunch of research you can truly uncover what the us user really wants not not really so you need to go and and a little bit in depth and study the human psyche right so this i mean with today's um ux training programs out there like ga and uh, tps1 as well right uh, we have some students here so is psychology covered in the curriculum no it's no. covered but not for me i feel it's not as in-depth as i would like it Sorry. so very very brief And another thing that designers would benefit from is by learning how a business is run, right? So, like you know, from P and L, from marketing, from product, across all the entire different spectrum, mm. right? In fact, um, there is a book that I would rule. I I would recommend for everyone to pick up is actually the personal MBA. I liked it a lot. I yeah, uh, and um, I have the the ebook as well as the uh, um, uh, or, or audio book. Right. Yeah. Maybe we can share that over in the comment. Huh? Personal MBA. The personal MBA. Yes. Right. And this book is actually gives you a good taste in terms of what is it like to to go into an MBA program. Right. Without having to pay a hundred thousand dollars up front. <laughs> That's quite true. Yeah. Yes, Chi Hot. Very very good questions, but I think fundamentally every one of the um, the the designer within um, the the team will must have the fundamental core skill sets. The fundamental core skill sets in this case would be the uh, user research, interaction design, visual design. These three things are critical. So the moment that you have these three things are um, kind of like you know. Uh, mastered, I won't say fully mastered, but comfortable. Then you can start out to branch out to like that is um, uh, related. So in this case would be you know development, right? More not not full hardcore JavaScript development, but more in terms of like you know front end like you know uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all that kind of stuff, right? And then once while you're doing this thing, what I would recommend still is read the personal MBA. Yes. So it's kind of like building that T shape. Except the T is very thick now. Yes. You need user, <laughs> no. user research, yep. interaction design, you know, visual design. And oh, and oh, one, one more thing, one. sorry. Yeah. One more thing. Um, communication has never been emphasized enough. The ability to actually articulate why you choose a specific design solution. Right? Uh, most of, like, you know, the. the the inexperienced designer would say, "Oh, because um, Facebook has it. Oh, because I saw it on Behance. It looks cool. Everybody does it, right? So yeah, and 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 which leads me to this this um, um, uh, pet peeve of mine. Every time I go to uh, the design related kind of like websites, right? Or look at my new revamp of Twitter, Facebook, Google." Yada yada yada, right? So why not you try to implement like the entire spectrum of the UX practice? So in this case, like you know, from research, I think some girl in the states, she she she's a career switcher. She used to be a medical student, I think, right? And recently she re redesigned Instagram, and she did it from like you know research from ground up, right? So yeah. Not from uh, the interviews that you've been to, like 
when you are interviewing someone or the portfolio that you have seen, uh, what were some of the weaknesses out from today's applicants? Or strengths? Yeah. Um, I would say the weakness as well as the strength is the 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 overconfidence right and this is quickly shattered when we've asked them to do the simple test because most of the time you know those who didn't pass actually struggled yeah so when they come in they are very confident yeah. and then when they reach the test bit that's where they can all yeah e either like you know they could execute but in terms of like you know articulating why the the the, the, the rationale they they all falter. Yeah. Yes. Uh, maybe. Jax. Yeah. Um, how do you resolve differences in design and thinking? You know, between say two designers or even between like a product manager and Between what? Product product manager. Okay, have I come across such instances recently? Mm. I don't think I have come across such instances where two designers working side by side, right, pair designing, right, you, you mentioned pair designing, right, where they failed to agree on specific outcome. Typically, the kind of like you know discussion that that we'll be having in terms of how should things um, uh, flow from one state to the next, or one page to the next, right? Or how certain filter system should be designed, but never about a specific like you know um, the the outlook, the UI level. Have you encountered? Well, what is the context that? You yeah. Sorry, you make sorry? Maybe the search engine. Yep. Uh, so filters are very relevant to our UI. Yep. Uh, as well as the UX So, I mean, there's been debate within the company about like, okay, should the filters be like vertical or horizontal or... Good. And, and not why, why, why does it matter? Why, why can't it be both? And why can't you run them at the same time and see the result from your analytics? In terms of the performance, does it meet the business objective? Or if not, ru run user tests. So is there any way that we can subjectively evaluate which solution works better? That's, you know, that, that should be the, the aim, right? It could be as simple as testing it with a whole bunch of like, you know, users or even like, you know, target users. That will kind of give you an inkling in terms of which solution might work better. Work towards getting data back the yes, because digital is cheap. Because every time you make a mistake, you can almost update immediately, right? So why are you bicker about like a, a placement of whether the filter should be on the left or on the top or on the right, right? Kay. Yes, you had a question. Uh, is a sketching important in the recruitment process, and do you use that in your team? Is it a way for you? To it's it's part of our daily process um, another thing that kind of a, an interesting fact about um, Palo um, designers um, every one of the designers are equipped with iPad Pro with Apple Pencil right it's not a recruitment ad right uh, it <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying this just to kind of like show off because it's we've seen the benefit of using digital tablet or sketching in this manner that helps to explain certain workflow and in fact um, there, there has been quite a number of occasions 
where live sketching is actually encouraged. So even during client presentation, right, instead of like, you know, detailing the final sketches, you would immediately on the spot sketch or like, you know, uh, sketch in and um, whatever client feedback is. So there is immediate kind of, oh, oh yes, that's what I mean, right? So yes, sketching is definitely something that everyone should always do first before you jump into a, a specific, you know, a high fidelity design. And like your question was during the recruitment process, right? So, do, uh, do you? Of course, that's part of your earlier part of validation, right? Um, you get to test whether, it more in terms of like conceptual. So does this concept work before you actually commit to it? So yeah, definitely, you know. Um, there, there are many tools that helps you to facilitate that and, and one of them is actually um, pop app, right? So if you're developing mobile app um, or even like, you know, whatever, um, desktop app, you can install it on your iPad, and take a snapshot of your sketch, and you can make it l interactive almost immediately, right? Using your sta static sketches. Okay, so we are down to the last question. Yes. Focus on here. Um, so uh, within the design team, um, the we have this habit of collecting weekly. Uh, we we have this habit of doing weekly one-on-one -on -one sessions, right? Uh, because um, this is something that I've learned from from the past. Review should not happen on half yearly basis or yearly basis more towards like, you know, your final end of year appraisal, right? So because review needs to happen on continuous basis, number one, to catch any potential problem that the person is having, whether um, more from on a project level or on uh, on other other stuff, right? And number two, it's, um, it's, 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 is to make sure that it's a certain level of account accountability on my end, on as well as the team leads end, right? So we want to make sure that you know, let's say, um, certain opportunity has been identified, like you know, for improvement, like you know, I need to get better at X. So we use this time, the weekly, uh, as well as the monthly, to evaluate or see how are you progressing, how are you reaching your goal, or if not. What can we do to ensure that you reach your, the goal that you set out to achieve? But is is really too frequent? Or yes, and yes. recently we adapted it to bi-weekly. Okay, so that's right. an iteration. There is an iteration. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I think. Did I answer your question? Yeah, the oh, oh, the yeah, the second one was the learning one, right? The learning. What am I learning now? Um. <coughs> I guess what I'm learning now is to, in terms of books, right, or specific topic within UX. Within UX. Um, at the moment, what we're learning now is how to uh, create solutions specifically more on the Internet of Things, um, how to create solution on using uh, blockchains, right? How to create, I think just these two at the moment. But in terms of books, um, what I just finished, uh, read, re uh, what I'm reading now, I'm reading originals, um, and I just finished as well reading uh, When Breath Becomes Air. That one is, yeah, a pretty um, awesome book. Is is <coughs> design or UX reader or philosophical? It's 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 philosophical, right. right? It's life. So it's always good to get yeah. all these different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So last one, you guys are hiring. 
Yeah. Oh, it depends on the hiring. Uh, um, Who wants an iPad Pro? All right. <laughs> Um, yes, we are always continuously looking for people. Um, I think if you want to know what the experience like, don't hear it from my mouth. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of colleagues are uh, sitting here. So there's three designers here, right? Another one behind, and another one behind. So there are six of us here. Okay. Okay. So awesome. That's the end of the session, and thank you, Shah. Uh, give her a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's a little, just a token of appreciation. It's just a ISD t-shirt. Yeah. So hope you awesome. like it. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot for coming by for another session um, of ISD session, a conversation. Uh, as you have seen it before, those who actually came here before have already seen it. We're actually doing some fundraising just to cover costs in terms of like meetup fees. Um, sometimes when sponsors are not uh, here, you know, we got to rent our own venue, etc. So we're just selling some t-shirts. Uh, if you would like to support, can get in touch with Dion or myself. Uh, Dion, you can just raise your hand. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's it for tonight. So thank you for coming. Uh, I think I don't know whether pizza is still maybe no more already, but feel free to network. Oh, there's still some pizzas. Yeah. So. Feel free to network around, um, get in touch with the guys on Palo IT. Right, so see you again next month. Okay. I thought that was you. Huh? I thought that was yours. The water? Yeah. No, it's good, you can have it. Yeah. Cool.